Okay, today in this video, I've got three different tips to help you customize your next regrip. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm AJ here in the Elite Fit Golf Build Shop, and today we're gonna to be talking about a few different ways that you can sort of customize your next re-gripping job because look there are a ton of different grips out there at this point you can find every different size color texture material you name it there's a ton of options but there are going to be cases where there are certain things you're looking for that you just can't find in every grip or in a certain grip that you like so i'm going to show you today three different ways that you can sort of modify a golf grip while you're putting it on in order to get something a little bit different out of it. Okay, number one, what I call the stretch. And this is going to be good for anyone looking for a grip that's a little bit smaller diameter. Again, there's tons of grips out there, but there aren't necessarily as many undersized grip options. So if you've got smaller hands or maybe you're doing a regripping job for a junior golfer, you want something a little bit smaller, you may not be able to find exactly what you're looking for, but this is a way that you can take a grip that you already like and modify it, make it a little bit smaller to compensate for a smaller hand size. Okay, here we go with the stretch. Usually when we put the grip on, what do we do? We sort of measure it out, we put the tape, usually just too shy of where the end of the grip would sit. Remember, anytime you put a grip on and you slide it on and it starts to stretch over the shaft, it actually shortens up a tiny bit. So wherever you would necessarily measure the end of it here when it's off the shaft, it's a little bit shorter when it's on. But for what we're doing here, what we're gonna do, starting out the same way, we go right to the end here, the butt cap is hanging out past the end of the shaft, and we're gonna put a little mark right about a half inch past where the end of the grip is. Next thing we're gonna do, Grab our tape, double-sided. Make sure it's a long enough piece to essentially go all the way to where we put that line, okay? Then we're just gonna install this tape as we usually do. Wrap it around one side, wrap it around the other side, twist off the end, cut off the excess. All right, at this point, we're just gonna put this grip on like we would any other grip. The only difference is we are going to make sure that we stretch this grip all the way so that the end of it gets to this black line. And when we do that, we're also gonna to need to sort of hold it there for about 45 seconds to a minute to let some of the tape start to regain a little bit of stickiness and let the shaft dry enough where the tape can hold the grip in that position. Otherwise, if you just stretch it and let go, it'll sort of start to come back on its own. So we really have to make sure we hold on to it just a little bit longer to make sure that we keep it stretched. Slide it on and stretch it. Make sure we're stretching all the way back from the butt end up to the tip. We don't wanna just stretch out the tip side because then this part will get a lot thinner and this part won't really get much thinner. So we wanna make sure we're starting that stretch all the way from the butt end and sort of pulling it out down the shaft towards the head. At this point we can let it go. As you can see, it's not moving back at all and this is definitely a thinner grip at this point. Now this will work with most grips. Uh, it will not really work so much with wind grips or the leather wrap style grips. You can't really stretch them because of the way they're designed, but any of the more traditional rubber grips, uh, multi-compounds, things like that, tour wraps, tour velvets, any of those types of grips, you can get a little bit extra stretch and get that diameter down again, about 1 64th under standard. Okay, regripping tip number two has to do with ribbed style or reminder grips. Those are grips that have the little sort of 
extra material running down the bottom of them so that you have a little better feel for where your hands are, where the club head is during the golf swing. Used to be very popular, it was on a lot of different grips. Then they kind of fell out of favor for a while and now they've come back again with some companies making these sort of super pronounced reminder rib style grips like Golf Pride Align. Now again, those are great and if you like one of those, perfect, but maybe there's a grip that you really like that isn't offered with a rib or with a reminder on it. Or maybe you're someone who likes to install their grips logo down so you don't want to see any of the you know golf pride lampkin whatever it is written on the top of that grip obviously if you're doing that and you've got a reminder or a rib running down it and you turn it upside down well that is probably not what you're looking for so if you need to put a rib if you need to put a reminder on a grip that doesn't have one all you need is a little piece of plastic that looks like this. This one comes from Golfworks. You can get them other places. They may look slightly different, but they're all pretty similar. That being just a thin piece of plastic tapered in on both ends. This one has sort of a, a sight line on one side that I guess could be helpful. I don't really think it's overly necessary. And the other side just has an adhesive backing with some paper over it. And all you're doing here is just sticking this onto the shaft and then putting your grip tape over it and just re-gripping it like you would any other golf club. The only real trick is just sort of making sure you get it set in the right position for where your hands are. So when you install it, you would turn the grip, turn the shaft upside down and try and get the head perfectly pointed down at the ground and install it with the tape just like that. If you're concerned that maybe it's a little bit to the side or the other side and you're not quite sure, you can take it out of the vise and just sort of hold it in your hands and look and see does it feel right looking at the club head. If it feels right, perfect. If it doesn't, you can pull it back off, position it again, take it out again and check and make sure it's in the right position. But again, once you get it on there in the right spot, it's just attached down with the adhesive, and then we're just gonna put the tape over it, grip it as usual, and now you've got a reminder on any grip you choose. This little reminder that you can stick on any shaft, can be steel, can be graphite, can be any club in the bag, and it'll work with any grip. It doesn't matter if it's a wind style grip or a tour velvet or a lampkin cross line or you name it, it will work with any of those grips. Okay, final tip today is how to make any grip into a reduced taper grip. You may have heard uh, of a plus four grip, right? That's a grip that essentially the part closer to the head, the bottom part of the grip, has less taper to it. So the entire grip runs a little more parallel. There's less taper going towards the head. Some people like that. It's offered in a number of different grips, but again, compared to the total number of grips out there, it's still a very small percentage. So if you have a certain grip you like, there's a good chance it may not be offered in a plus four style. But it's a very simple thing when you are re-gripping your golf clubs to do the tape in such a way that you can make your own reduced taper grip. First thing I like to do is just kind of take a grip on the shaft like I would be holding it and just sort of get an idea of where my lower hand is gonna be sitting on the shaft. Okay, so right around here. So this is really the area, kind of here to here, where we're gonna focus on building up that shaft. And we're gonna make a line just down from the end of the grip, about, about a quarter of an inch or so, just like that. And that's where our tape is gonna start, okay? At this point, we are just gonna take our build-up tape, starting with a piece about, what do we call that? That's about three inches. And we're gonna put our first piece of buildup tape that runs right up to that line that we drew and put the first piece of tape down just like that. Now the next piece of tape we're gonna get, we wanna make sure it's about a half inch longer. So if you're worried about it, I would cut all your tape before you start putting it on so you can actually measure how long this piece is and make sure you get your next piece to be slightly longer and your next piece slightly longer than that. 
we're just going to eyeball it here for this uh, demonstration. So this piece, let's see, how'd I do? Well, it's a little bit, little bit longer, but that's okay. Now for the second piece, because we put the first one on facing face down, the second one we're going to go face up in the opposite direction, just so it all sticks together a little better and you don't create a big seam on it. Okay, so there's the second piece, just like that. Third one, we're gonna do the same thing again. We want it to be slightly longer than the last one. This one again, because we went from the underside. Next, this one, we're gonna go from the top. How do we do on this one? This one was a little closer, that's about half an inch. We're gonna put that one on next. And then one more piece of tape. Again, half an inch longer than that last one, which is about, call it there. And we're going to go again from the underside and stick this on there. And again, half inch longer. And we're going to wrap that on there just like that. At this point, then we would just put on our regular double-sided grip tape for our final layer. Throw that on there. Don't worry, you're probably going to get some little wrinkles up here where you have the build-up tape. That's sort of inevitable when you do this kind of thing. It's not going to matter. You're not going to feel it under the grip. And at this point, we just go ahead, again, like any other grip, and slide it on. So there you go, that's three different ways that you can customize your grips and get exactly what you're looking for in case you can't necessarily just find it for sale. Hey, if you've got any questions about anything I did today, definitely leave those down in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that bell icon so you'll be alerted when I post new videos. Definitely check out my new channel, Elite Fit Golf, where you can find videos about equipment and club fitting. And you can also find me on Instagram at Mobile Club Maker. I'll see you next time. Bye.